So today may be April Fool's Day, but it's not a joke. April, top contender for stargazing opportunities. Our friend and astronomer Jason Kendall is here for <laughs> what we have in store. So last month we had the solar eclipse, now yes. we have a lunar eclipse. Maybe talk uh, quickly about the difference yes. and what we're going to see. Well, a solar eclipse is where the moon blocks out the light from the sun, so we're in the shadow of the sun. And some friends of mine went up to uh, Norway to see that, wow. and they're doing a talk on it later this month. But what we're doing is that on April 4th, in the just before, just before dawn, the moon will be setting in the west and it'll be going into the Earth's shadow. So it'll have this nice blood red glow for people mm -hmm. west of the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. It'll be a lovely, lovely view for them. Nothing for us, though. Yeah, pretty much we're doomed. <laughs> we'll get the beginning of it, but. Well, well, oh, well, I don't, <laughs> we're not doomed. doomed. No, no, no. Yeah, There's no apocalyptic thing. Oh, yeah, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, we're fine. Right. There's right. nothing wrong with an eclipse. First uh, <laughs> meteor shower of the year with the peak of the, the, the Lyrid <laughs> meteor shower? That's right. April showers, of course, uh -huh. as you know. So we've got the April Lyrid meteor shower coming up at the end of the month. It's all through the month, but the peak nights are on the 21st and 22nd. And you go out after midnight to see it. And what you're going to do is go someplace where there's no light, uh, there's no clouds or no dark or no lights, and just look up. That's all you got to do. Hmm, that seems pretty easy. Yeah. At the end of the month, April 26, there's going to be a triangle with the moon, Jupiter. And a beehive? Yeah, that's right. There's the wonderful star cluster known as the beehive. And it's in the constellation of Cancer. And it's a very faint constellation, but the star cluster itself is really easy to see. And so you can see these three things in the in a telescope all together. And the fun part is, is that if you have a pair of binoculars, you'll actually be able to see them all in a group. It's a wonderful sight, and you don't even need the binoculars to see it if you're in a really dark place. But a pair of binocs is the only thing you'd ever need. Binocs. You know, binocs. Anyway. You know, there, there are a number of apps, Jason, that I know that you put on your iPad and you can hold, hold yeah. up, and it gives you a, a good idea of where you are. What's the one you like? Well, I do like to use Sky Safari. It's a wonderful thing, but I'm really old school. I like an old-fashioned, big old piece of paper like Will Turian's uh, Uranometria or something like these enormous sky atlases from Sky and Telescope. They've got uh, fantastic things that help you learn the sky and actually go up and look at the stars and so you can actually see the maps of the sky. We'll put that info on our, on our website. Great, Jason thank you. Jason Kendall, always great to see you. <laughs> Very good. He was going to wear a pink flamingo bow tie today. You know, okay, didn't. next month? Okay. Yeah. All right, there you go. <laughs>